Hello everyone, so in this video we are going to see how to solve problem B game on ranges of round 763 division 2. So I solved this problem using pretty simple brute force and let's see the problem. So the problem is basically Alice and Bob are playing a game and the game is that Alice has a set of disjoint ranges of integers initially containing only one range 1 to n. Okay, so she has ranges of integers initially containing 1 to n. So in one turn, Alice picks a range L to R from set S and asks Bob to pick a number in the range. So Alice has a range L to R and Bob picks a number from that range D and D has to be in L to R. And then what happens is that Alice removes L to R and then puts in the range L to D minus 1 that is if L is less than or equal to D minus 1 and then she puts D plus 1 to R if D plus 1 is less than or equal to R. And the game ends when S is empty and it's obvious that after a while the game will end, after n exact n turns it will end, right? Okay, so after playing the game Alice remembers all the ranges L to R she picked from the set but Bob does not remember any of the numbers that he picked. So what does it mean? It means that we will be given all the ranges L to R and we want to find the D which was chosen corresponding to that L to R. Okay, so the test cases and the examples include that for n times will be given L to R and it's in no particular order, not that it matters, but it's in no particular order L to R and we want to say what D was picked with that range, okay. So for each n, uh, so we want to print n lines and we want to print L and R and then the D which was corresponding to that L to R, okay. So let me first explain to you quickly how the game is working. So for example, say 1 to 5, Alice, Alice has a range 1 to 5, okay? And suppose Bob picks the number 2, so suppose he picks D is equal to 2. So what happens now is uh, obviously this will be removed and what will she now put in the set? She'll now put 1 to 1, okay? So till D minus 1 and after D plus 1. So D minus 1, L to D minus 1, what will we get? 1 to 1, right? And then D plus 1 to R. So d plus 1 to r, what will we get? We'll get 2 to uh, 3 to 5, okay? So now these two will be added to the set and this will be removed, okay? So, and suppose that uh, Bob picked d is equal to 1, okay? So if Bob picked d is equal to 1, then left hand side nothing will be added and on the right hand side d plus 1 to r will be added because l has to be, as you can see here, uh, L has to be less than or equal to D minus 1, which is not the case right now. So the left part, nothing will be added and on the right part, D plus 1 to R will be added. So what is D plus 1 to R? 2 to 5. Okay, so 2 to 5 will be added. So likewise, the game is working pretty simple. Okay, so if I am to explain with another test case very quickly. So let's just take this test case, 1, 3, 1. <clears throat> let's just take this test case and you can see that what's happening is that uh, suppose the range is 1 to 5 and Bob picked the number 3. So 1 to 5 will be removed and 1 to 2 and 4 to 5 will be added. Likewise. So right now I'm only given ranges. Okay. So as you can see in the question, what I'm given is suppose I'm given 6, num six ranges. So 1 to 1, 3 to 5, 4 to 4. And for each, I want to guess what number Bob picked in that. Okay. So let's see. So let's start with an easy test case. So let's see this test case first. Okay, so we're given three ranges, one to three, two to three, two to two. Okay, so let's try brute force. Let's think because it's obvious that brute force here will work. We can go O of n square as you can see from the constraints. So let's think brute force wise. So one to three, Bob picks a number D, right? And that D will have to be between one to three, right? So that means that Bob can pick, Bob can pick any number from 1 to 3, right? Okay, now uh, first let's get one condition. What if the numbers are same, right? So let's look here as you can see the numbers are same. So there's only one number Bob can pick, right? So Bob can pick number 1 to 3 and here Bob can pick number 2 to 2. So in this case obviously Bob can only pick 2, Right? So that means that what I'm trying to tell you is suppose uh, in three test cases, one test case is L to R. Right? So Bob can only pick a number from L to R. Right? So if uh, you have the same numbers in L and you have the same number in R, then Bob can only pick the same number. So if these two are equal, then Bob will pick the same number. So D will be the same. So this is the one condition. 
So if I am to write in this condition, so if L of i equal to R of i, then answer or D is equal to L of i. Okay, so let's get this condition out of the way. And I'll also show you guys the code and the implementation that I've done. Okay, now, so in here, it's pretty simple as two and two are there, Bob can only pick two. But here we have options, right? Bob can pick number one, two, three. So one by one, let's check what happens if Bob picks one. Okay, so suppose Bob picked one. So we're checking one by one, right? So suppose Bob picked one. So what will happen if Bob picks one? If Bob picks one, then two to three will be added, right? And so in the whole list, do you see two to three? Yes, two to three is there. So that means that Bob did pick one. So for here, D will be one, okay? And then again, let's go to two, let's come to two to three. So what are the possible options that Bob can pick? Bob can only pick either two or Bob can either pick three. So what happens if Bob picks two? So if Bob picks two, then what will be added? So on the left side, nothing will be added. On the right side, D plus one to R, meaning three, three will be added. So in the whole list, do you see three, three? No, right? That means that Bob did not pick two. Okay, now let's see, let's suppose Bob picked three. So what happens if Bob picks three? If Bob picks three, then right side, nothing will be added. And then on the left side, we'll have oh, L2, D minus one. So two to two will be added. And can you see two to two in the list? Yes, two to is in the list. That means that here, Bob picked one. So all I'm doing is I'm traversing from Li to Ri and I'm checking and I'm seeing whatever happen, what happens if Bob picks the exact number. So right now, what is the answer? Bob picks, Bob picked three because only when Bob picks three, then two, two is left. So basically what I'm doing is, so what I'm doing is for each i in uh, Li to Ri, so I'm traversing from Li to Ri and then I'm seeing if that, uh, if I pick that i, then whatever is now added, whatever now is supposed to be added to the set is already there or not. Okay, and I'm using map for that. So quite simply, all I'm doing is uh, suppose, let's see another test case. So suppose this test case was given, right? So let's see if I just copy this. Yeah, okay. So suppose three to five is given to me, then all I'm doing is I'm traversing. So here answer will be one only, right? So D is equal to one, because like I said, if Li and Ri are both equal, then that will be the answer itself. So here three to five. So I'm seeing, uh, so first I'm putting the map of these as one. So I'm making a map of pair. So I'll show you the code as well. So I'm making a map of pair and so I'll just say map of pair and whatever ranges I get, I'm putting their map as one. So then I can see whether a particular pair is in our list or not. Okay, so I come at three and five. So I see what happens if Bob picks three. So if Bob picks three, what will be added? Four to five will be added. And do we have four to five? Yes, we have four to five. So here, what will D be? So D will be three. And as you can see in the answer, here we have three, five as three only. So this is how I'm doing pretty simple. It's pretty, pretty simple. It's just brute force. All I'm doing is from Li to Ri, I'm checking each number and I'm seeing if Bob did pick that number, then whatever is supposed to be added to the set is there or not. Quite simple. Okay. So I'll show you my, I'll show you guys my code and I'll also give you guys a link to this code in the description. And by the way, I was not able to code this in the duration of contest. I joined the contest late and I got the idea, but I wasn't able to code it during the contest. Okay. So like I said, first I'm taking in Li and Ri and initially whatever I have, I'm making the map of that as one. And then for each i from zero to n, I'm traversing from Li to Ri, okay? So first condition, if Li is equal to Ri, then simply that itself. Now, so if suppose Bob picks J, right? Suppose if Bob picks J, then what is supposed to be there? Li to Ji minus one should be there and J plus one to R should be there, right? Because uh, what we have is uh, if in L to R, if D is picked, then L minus one comma D will, uh, D L and D minus one will be added and D plus one and R will be added. So if in L to R, D is picked, then these two should be in our uh, set. 
okay so that's all i'm checking here i'm checking if l of i to j minus 1 is there or not and j plus 1 to r is there or not okay then one more condition is there so what if bob picks the same number so suppose bob in l to r bob picks l then what will happen is d plus 1 to r should be there right and if bob picks r itself then l to d minus 1 should be there okay and that's what i'm checking right here okay so in these three conditions i'll give you guys a link to this code and basically what i'm doing is using brute force i'm traversing from li to ri and i'm seeing for each number if bob had picked that number then whether that would be then whatever that would get is there in the set or not so that's it guys and if you have any doubts then put them in the comments i'll be sure to answer thank you